as said, I'm just back from Philippines, <coughs> and that's why I decided to use Fred's case. So this is not thorough analysis. I'm, I'm trying to tease you so that uh, you, <coughs> you hopefully realize uh, from these uh, pictures and, uh, and challenges I'm, I'm showing here uh, that there is a lot to be done. Uh, quite many things uh, which uh, uh, Junji and, and Christian have already said, I'm repeating here <laughs> using this case study. I, when I was listening to Junji, I, I thought that it's exactly like we would have discussed what we are going to talk about, but we, are, we haven't discussed. Uh, about Haiyan, uh, or it's known Yolanda in, in Philippines, uh, it hit uh, the uh, Philippines Islands on 8th of November. Philippines consists of a little bit more than 7,000 islands, and 2,000 of them are inhabited. And um, when you look the path, uh, this is one of the strongest uh, storms ever measured, and when you look the path, uh, it really hit uh, through uh, the center of Philippines. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really killing speed when you think about 235 kilometers constant speed. And um, you, you can see that. Um, I don't have that much picture, so uh, I, I thought it's not really for this presentation, but uh, all the buildings which were made of bamboo or wood were tilted, they were collapsed more or less in, in the badly damaged region, uh, regions. Uh, then you have buildings which were made of bricks uh, and uh, made of cement. Those were standing, but normally without roof, if the roof had been normal corrugated iron roof. It was, uh, <laughs> there were some houses, I, I think uh, one of the loggies from Finland has exported their rannila, uh, whatever, roofing material, really uh, perfect uh, looking uh, roofs. Uh, they were also, uh, all the corners where the wind can go down, uh, below the roof, they were, it was like a sardine, uh, sardine can uh, opened a bit. So that was the power. Um, it's, uh, this is a beautiful picture, unfortunately. <laughs> the light doesn't uh, really uh, bring it uh, out there, but uh, there were a lot of uh, sites where you can, you can see uh, that uh, people have to clean the debris out and, and start working uh, from fresh. Thinking now a little bit uh, Philippines, and um, uh, NESA people are always saying th about that Finland is an island. We, uh, we uh, import the goods over the sea to Finland, but here you have really islands. And here you can think that all the islands are like tiny little states, if you think the preparedness. Uh, what is good uh, in Philippines is the approach to community preparedness. Uh, there are areas where, where people really, uh, they go through exercises and, and they think how to prepare for uh, future disasters. And we, we, we must remember that on eastern parts of the island there is conflict area. There have been uh, constant uh, typhoons and storms. Uh, there have been uh, earthquakes and so on. It's really disaster prone area. Now, when it comes to production and stocking on those islands, in modern days uh, logistics, you don't scatter uh, tiny little factories or, or production centers here and there. You try to produce a lot, which means that if you don't have then connections, which is there at the bottom, you don't, if you don't have the connections between the islands after the disaster, the stocks are always in the wrong place. And in this case, they were all the time in the wrong place. Um, then if you are stocking there something, because of the climate change, uh, what, what is increasing, when Jönsi uh, showed the number of MDOT 
uh, the curves, what, what you showed. What is really increasing are the, the di uh, disasters related to weather, uh, storms, uh, floods, and, and so on. Now, <clears throat> nowadays, uh, if, if you look uh, where people are really, uh, kind of w where they are dying uh, in disasters, earthquakes are really bad in that. But more and more increasing are floods. Anything where floods are involved, it can be tsunami after the earthquake or it can be typhoon with a, with a plus flood. And uh, when people seek uh, refuge, they seek shelter, where do you go? You try to go down. And then comes the water, which means that you are lost. The same goes with, uh, with the stocks. Uh, there in Philippines, people had their food stocks and all that. You don't have your food stock high, you have it low, which means that it's all gone. And uh, that was uh, also when it comes to uh, all kind of uh, preparedness stocks and all, all that, uh, they are basically gone because of the, uh, because of the floods. Uh, what's interesting in, in Philippines, and I'm not an expert at all in, in this, but uh, I was reading uh, newspapers there every day when I was there. I tried to get different types of newspapers. Um, we have, I must say, we have issues here in Finland, uh, how our politicians talk to each other every now and then. But don't go to Philippines to learn more of that. It was unbelievable. And uh, it was kind of, uh, then after, in the aftermath, uh, it was uh, clear that the political system and the political culture is not improving uh, the, the response. Uh, there is competition, there's real rivalry, and uh, it is, it's, uh, it's affecting, actually, uh, the operation there. Coordination systems have been developed. Uh, there is proper national coordination system, and then uh, there is uh, probably, uh, NSN has sold their uh, the networks, but unfortunately, when you have this type of a typhoon, the network is down. In Philippines, uh, people are still operational, and uh, they are not totally dependent on the networks. But this is also to be thought here in Finland. Um, I've been, uh, after Kobe earthquake and after Fukushima in, in Japan, uh, checking there with, uh, with local colleagues how they, have, uh, how they have coped and how they have worked. You can imagine, in Japanese system, there is a plan for everything. And there is a direct hierarchy then, who's doing what? It's agreed, it's planned, and, and uh, everybody assumes that it works. I remember after Kobe, when um, I was uh, discussing with the, with the pr uh, prefect uh, in Kobe, how he described then uh, uh, what, what was really worst. The worst was there were no communication. He did not know uh, how different organizations are working. Are they doing what was agreed, uh, how the things are going? Also, what was hampering, and that happens also, happened also now in Philippines, uh, the people who are involved in uh, disaster response are truly worried about their families and their relatives because there's no communication. So it is, uh, it's really taking a toll when people try to do their responsibility and, uh, and help the community there. And at the same time, you are worried about your next of kin. You really don't know what, what has happened. So the communication, lack of communication kills the well-planned coordination system. And, and this is something where, again, uh, thinking logistics, we, we have to find ways uh, to, to tackle that. In Philippines, then, uh, the connections. Uh, there were plans uh, already, you know, how to deliver uh, material and all that, but then uh, when, when we come to that part, it's, uh, it's clear that uh, it didn't work quite as planned. So, as I said, community preparedness is well done. There, uh, in schools, kids are, are learning 
how to prepare and, and how to act uh, during the times of disaster. Then when Haiyan hit, this is uh, a report of uh, yesterday. These figures are mainly from, from that report. So altogether, there will be about 7,000 dead uh, because most of the people who are missing will, uh, will have perished. Uh, close to 20,000 injured. These are not really kind of big figures, uh, thinking that, uh, that there are about 100 million people uh, altogether in, in Philippines. But uh, the big and important figures are the numbers of people in need of food. This, when you have, uh, at the moment, you still have there 2.5 million people who would urgently need food. This is a big figure. And uh, half of them are kids. That's something where clearly uh, the, the logistic chain is not working. We are not able to deliver as a humanitarian community. Uh, another important thing is that uh, more than a million houses were damaged and uh, half of them completely destroyed. This means uh, that there is a huge need now to provide temporary shelter for the people and then there will be even bigger need to start quickly uh, reconstruction of, of these houses. This means a uh, lot of movement of, of materials. Number of uh, dis uh, displaced people is, of course, dependent on this figure of, of destroyed houses. That uh, figure has gone down one quarter now, which means that people are going back to the places where they were, and uh, they start thinking already now uh, reconstruction. This is a really good thing. But at the same time, quarter of a million people are living in thousand different locations, which are temporary shelters. That requires then new type of a, a supply chain to these locations. Those locations were not inhabited earlier, now they are. What is really worrying is that uh, about 5,000 people are, are leaving every day from Leite. That means that people are gathering to towns, to cities, because they think that there is no future for their families. That's bad for the future. It's really bad for reconstruction. It's bad for, again, how do you deliver everything for these people in suburbs of those, uh, those cities and towns. So this is not a good news. About 10% of the population of Philippines uh, were clearly affected by, by uh, higher and um, what the international community is doing is that we concentrate there as well. Uh, this is based on the analysis of, of uh, uh, Filipino uh, authorities. We concentrate on food, water, hygiene, and health. And uh, of course, then these uh, shelters. Now, what are the challenges there? Uh, this is based on, on kind of what I saw and what I have discussed with, uh, with colleagues there. As said, uh, when the floods came, uh, family resources were washed away. All the stocks, uh, your, your home, uh, often nowadays uh, also the livelihood, uh, your, your fields were washed. So where to cultivate now? Your boat was sunk. How do you fish? Um, then uh, roads were badly damaged, uh, bridges mainly, but then uh, the roads were blocked with uh, debris. Uh, boats, and not only fishing boats, but uh, more importantly, the boats which were used to, uh, to transport goods uh, between islands were, were destroyed. Harbors are not working well uh, because uh, of the, of the uh, storm damages and same with the airport. When electricity and telecommunication goes down, uh, at the bottom there you, you see uh, this is operation center. <laughs> there are two lights, 
one from the computer, and then there's a torch. Uh, and uh, when the computer, in the beginning, uh, there were not enough generators and all that in different places, so quite a challenge. Now, uh, when telecommunication is down, there is not a proper uh, comprehensive needs assessment. Um, then um, nowadays it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing that we emphasize uh, cash distribution, but there are times and there are places where you can do that, not in Philippines, because there were nothing to sell. Uh, you've, you've seen images where people were robbing uh, then uh, shops there, they were looted, the shops were looted, uh, because there were not enough uh, material for the families to buy. So then uh, there was, in a way, self-service. service, And uh, uh, there, is, there was no way to provide supply to these shops because the, uh, the transport systems were, were not working. Um, Assessment information was delayed. Uh, as I said, it's uh, because of the communication, uh, telecommunication, but it is because there, there was not access to many pa uh, places, quick access. And um, transport capacity is not at all sufficient for this type of a rapid uh, deployment of all materials. And uh, there were funny looking uh, trucks, uh, going with, uh, with loads which never should have been loaded on those trucks, but uh, there was everything uh, which could be used was, was really used. The capacity of ports, um, I, I will show you on, on next slide uh, a couple of places there, but in general capacity of the ports was not sufficient for the, uh, for the flow of material, both airports and harbor, harbors. Uh, the plane there, do you recognize? It, it's not properly labeled, so, but it's not for CIA, CIA uh, <laughs> transport. Um, it's, a, it's a Finnish plane. It's a, a Finnair partly owned, uh, how do you call that, Nordic Airlines, Nordic Global Airlines, if I remember. Um, there was a fresh wind, I must say, when this plane came. Not because it came, but because the captain of the, of the plane was so angry that, that nobody served them in two hours. Um, I mean, served, they didn't have even stairs to come out. They were really boiling inside the plane. So when he was shouting from this distance, uh, there was this wind. <laughs> but um, I must say that, um, that when he understood then that it was not the Red Cross or it was not uh, the ramp manager of Cebu International Airport who was making his life uh, difficult, it was the problem that in that it's Cebu International Airport, there was one high loader which was uh, capable of, of uh, to be used. There's, an, uh, there's another uh, cargo area on, on the other side that could be used there. There was only one at the airport. There were six, uh, uh, six planes which would have needed the same tool at the same time then, which meant that there were huge planes standing then hours and waiting that. Two of the big, big forklifts uh, uh, broke within 12 hours there. It was less than 12 hours the difference uh, between these two collapses. Uh, things like that, so they were really stretching uh, their resources uh, to the limits and beyond. And uh, then it meant that, yes, uh, Suomi Poika had to cool down and uh, wait. Um, the storage capacity uh, was really destroyed. All the big buildings, uh, if, you, if you think about the walls and the roofs and all that, these are the best sales ever to take wind, and they took. So uh, all the light uh, warehouses around the airports, in the harbors and all that, they were destroyed. 
So now there is a need to get very quickly there uh, these what we call rub holes, huge uh, tented holes. That was not in the original assessment information because nobody thought that they were so totally uh, destroyed in the area. Finally, uncoordinated heat actions. Uh, people really mean good, they, they do what they can. But uh, there are elections coming, so you can imagine how the candidates are then organizing uh, collections and distributions. But not only that, there is this private-public partnership in the way that private companies are organizing their own collections. Their, some of them announce that they have their own coordination center, but those coordination centers did not really partnership with public uh, co coordination centers. In a word, it was a mess. Um, and it was, the mess was created when several people thought simultaneously to help the people but they never talk to each other. So it's, you know, in Finland we don't talk to each other. Uh, we would do the same. But uh, it's, uh, it, it was really kind of uh, when, if you, if you then look what was really exceptionally good there was the spirit of the people. With the spirit of the people, you can tackle most of these things. Because the local people, they really try to do their level best. I mean, and I'm talking about the people who were victims of this uh, uh, typhoon. They were good. They were fun. And, uh, and they worked a lot uh, to, to mitigate their own uh, situation there. You don't see, I guess, uh, the text there. On the right, uh, there is uh, Goyon. Talking about the harbors, talking about these private initiatives, uh, we got our uh, clinic Wednesday on that, uh, last Wednesday on that Finner flight uh, to Cebu, which is the other circle there. And uh, immediately, uh, International Red Cross put it on, on trucks, then to ferry, and then it, uh, it started moving towards uh, Guyon. And it went there, and it was there, and it waited there 38 hours to be offloaded, because the harbor could not handle the load. And uh, that was because there were many smaller boats with all kind of materials uh, sent by people all around uh, Philippines and abroad, and uh, the, the harbor could really not handle that. So that's one part of, and, uh, but it's not in this, on this map, uh, the text there are indicating what were the problems. The Guyon Harbor was not a problem. So 38 hours for a ship to wait offloading is not a problem. Then Cebu, uh, it says there in that square that Cebu Airport is, is functioning. I told you already about the high lower, uh, the forklifts and all that. But this is what we call functioning airport. And uh, this means that everything is kind of uh, relative when you, when you look at the, what is good logistics uh, in disasters. We try to get fast uh, help to people. Uh, we try to base that on the needs assessment. Here was a question earlier about uh, what are the events we should be preparing for. I wouldn't prepare anymore for any events. I prepare only for needs. I've done this scenario place planning all my life and then later realized that I was wrong. The scenarios change all the time, but the needs of the people are more or less the same. If you look earthquake, you look floods, or you look that you have to be evacuated because of radiation, People need the same things. You can actually plan much more based on services and then it's easier to plan also for the logistics because the services are built on the logistics uh, chain we are, we are able to provide there. This is also the case here in, in uh, Philippines, I hope in the future, that uh, we do proper analysis what worked, what did not work, 
uh, we, we plan better way where to keep our stocks and uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of materials for what services we, we need to provide there. But for the people who are studying logistics, this would be the laboratory to go in just now uh, to start analyzing. But nobody is welcome there because uh, it would be annoying all the people who are trying to fight to get the goods uh, to the people. But um, that, uh, that is something to be thought for the next disaster, how to prepare your, your cells for that. Thank you very much. I'm ready to answer any questions. <laughs>